are the channeled scab lands of eastern Washington state in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. They form a truly spectacular landscape and they're spread over hundreds of square miles. And today they're a popular camping, boating and recreation area a few hours drive to the east of Seattle. It wasn't always a good place to enjoy a weekend away with the family, however. At the end of the last ice age, only some 10 to 12,000 years ago, this entire landscape was unrecognizable with none of the channels, the ravines, or any of the geological features you can see now. This entire region of Earth was scoured down to the bedrock, which itself was torn away to form canyons and cliffs and giant potholes. The land was literally transformed and carved into this epic landscape in a very short period of time, likely weeks or even just a few days, by a single gigantic and destructive event. Massive torrents of floodwaters, mud and giant chunks of rock and ice, torn from the continental ice sheets and glaciers that covered much of North America at the time, once roared through here on their way to the ocean. An unimaginably violent torrent that was hundreds of feet deep above the tops of the cliffs, above the plateau. This event was not contained just in the canyons you can see. It ran over everything in this area. It was a truly cataclysmic flood. Now as giant and destructive as this flood was, it was but only one of the many side effects that resulted from the global cataclysms and extinction level events that occurred on Earth during the period that marked the end of the last ice age. This was the end of the Pleistocene era and the beginning of our own Holocene era, the era we are still in today. We call this tumultuous time period the Younger Dryas and the Bolling Alarod, and as a species we experienced these catastrophes firsthand, and they likely brought us to the very brink of extinction. This was a rough time for the planet, and in particular for any of the large creatures that lived on its surface, us included, as that surface was going through a literal upheaval. Some 10 million square miles of coastal lands and islands went underneath the oceans. Sea levels rose some 300 to 400 feet, or well over 100 meters, up to the levels that they are currently at today. While we humans barely survived this, fully half of all of the species of large land mammals living on planet Earth at the time did not. Strangely enough, these cataclysms occurred in the period just before our own concept of recorded history and civilization had begun. I wonder why that is. As a species, we've been here for at least 300,000 years, perhaps even longer. And it seems odd that it is only in the last five or 6,000 years that we have built civilizations. It's almost as if everything that was there before was wiped off the earth by, you know, some massive cataclysm. And is it just a coincidence that this very concept was a universally accepted fact for almost all of the ancient civilizations that we know about? That in almost every ancient culture, in their own origin stories, they uniformly tell the tale that the Earth was remade in the past through flood or fire or disaster, and that their ancestors barely lived through it, and that everything was forced to begin again. Even in our own modern and wildly popular sun cult known as the Christian religion, which is essentially an amalgamation of several more ancient sun cults, we also hold to this premise. The world was flooded, everyone was killed, and we were forced to begin anew. New scientific work, based on research and data collected particularly in the last 20 years or so, and even some new discoveries in the recent weeks and months, such as the Hiawatha Crater in Greenland, is now forming a clear picture of what occurred during this catastrophic period. The clues are all around us, and they've been written into the very earth that we live on. Our own world, the so-called New World, has been rebuilt on the ruins of the Old One, and much like the channeled scablands, the evidence for the violence of the past are right here for us to interpret. This evidence, these clues, speak of a threat, a threat of which it is really not hyperbole to say represents the single greatest risk to humanity's existence. And it's one that is a cosmic certainty to happen again at some point in our future. Our ancestors, the great ancient civilizations of our past, speak to us of this threat. It's encoded into their architecture, into their religions, and in their own records. A quiet war is being waged in academic disciplines like geology to get the truth of this message out, and a slow awakening to the truth of our past is happening. Although this message is alarming, we are, thanks to technology and our own civilization's growth, in a position to address it, but only if we can become aware of the truth and collectively work together towards changing our priorities. 
Ultimately doing so may be the greatest single purpose for our species, because at stake is not only our own continued existence, but the eventual spread of our civilization into the stars and the next phase of human evolution. My name is Ben and you're watching Uncharted X. I hope you'll join me in part two of this series as we explore the cataclysms of the Ice Age and look at the new research that is uncovering the truth of what happened to our planet and what that means for our understanding of history and ultimately what it means for our collective future.